We begin in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. We bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except the one Allah and that his beloved Nabi and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last and final messenger. In the brief time that we have before Salatul Isha, I just want to take uh, this opportunity to remind myself and everyone else that this day that we have begun as of the time of Maghrib today happens to be an extremely auspicious day and an extremely Mubarak day. And today specifically what I would like to cover are certain ahadith and traditions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in regards to this day so that tonight, tomorrow, uh, and then of course inshallah the Mubarak day of Friday become auspicious for us and it becomes a time in which we submit to Allah and remember Allah and seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was just commenting a little while ago that there is a very humongous and massive incident, as we all know, that took place on this day as well. The incident that happened at Karbala, it was not a one-day incident, rather it was an incident that lasted a little over a week. And in it, the beloved grandson of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we say beloved because the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam specifically mentioned that he loved his grandson. And in this in this incident, in this um, incident of you know butchery, really, um, there is there's so many of the Ahlul Bayt, uh, people that we give salam on. We say wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. The ah, a lot of times, sometimes, or sometimes people argue and say that yeah, why do we hold the Prophet's family in such esteem? And the reality that is that on this day. There were so many family members, and we want to say the family of Hussein, rather we would say the family of the Prophet Muhammad were butchered on this day uh, as a result of whatever happened. And so inshallah, I'm anticipating and hoping that in the upcoming days or weeks before this month is over, we will do uh, a special on, on that, and I, I'd like to speak about some of that as well. Hello? But today specifically, Hello? as I Hello? mentioned, I just want to cover some of the ideas of the Prophet Ali the Salaam. I don't know why, because I'm checking to here. Today, some things that I have covered. I don't know why you're not getting it. Uh, I'm trying to check. Because I just to be... I have it now, are you seeing anything? I don't know why you're not getting it. The day the Nabi Muhammad told his companions that the day of Ashura, so uh, I, day I, I tested everything was working out as well. Uh, on even the Quraysh during the times of the Jahiliya would fast on this day. Brother Zabib is here to comment. Um Ibn Allah narrates that the Quraysh would fast on this day during the time of Jabiliya. And he narrates that the Quraysh at one point had committed a great sin, and this was their atonement uh, for that sin. The Prophet ﷺ himself used to fast before his Prophet. And then there's a really famous story and incident where uh, when the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina, he noticed that. Um, the, the people that the Yahud of Medina were fasting. And so the Prophet Ali you know, commented to the believers and said that if they fast for this reason, and the reason was because they were free from the tyranny of Pharaoh, the Prophet Ali responded and said that we have more right to Musa than you do because we are more culture to Moses in practice and in Ibadah and, and so many things in following the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, we should fast on this day. But there's another <coughs> riwayah, Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, both the Arabians, Allah and Umar, the Allah and Umar, says that the Prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam, says, or as you mentioned, Salman Nabiyu Ashurullah wa Allah wa Siyami, the Prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam, would fast on the tenth of Bukharam, and he would command for people to fast on the day. But I'm not fully about Ramadan, and when Ramadan became an obligation, he thought of that, that this fast was left out. In fact, there's another narration where the Prophet said to the Sahaba that if you choose to fast on the day, you can fast on this day. And if you choose not to fast on the day, you don't have to fast on this day. But the narration mentioned that the Prophet continued to fast. 
Now, there's a question that a lot of my people ask and say that can do we only fast on the 10th of Muharram? The Prophet says, that distinguish yourselves from the people of the other faith, from the Jews. Fast one day before it or fast one day after it. And that's essentially the reminder that we have for all of us. That we should try, and, and one of the reasons why we chose to host or have this event or this small talk on this night, Monday before uh, the 10th of Muharram, is that we want for this to serve as a reminder to everyone. Right? Some people already fasted today, and then they will fast tomorrow, inshallah. Some people will fast tomorrow and Friday, inshallah. But the idea is to fast. Now, we fast because of, of our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We fast because all of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pious predecessors in the communities before us, would fast on this day. So we are, in essence, following this extremely beautiful tradition of the pious people before us, not just that of the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's so many things that we do because Allah mentions it in the Quran. There's so many things that we do that because the Prophet Sallallahu did these things, or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi commanded or reminded us to do these things. We fast on Ashura for that reason, and in addition to that reason, one of the reasons we fast is because so many of the pious predecessors of all the communities, so many communities before us fasted on this day. So in essence, we're following this extremely beautiful tradition. This happens to be the fast when we fast tomorrow. We're able to say that so many of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fasted on this day. We can't even say that about our prayer five times a day. Now, this is not to say that prayer is of a lower category. Prayer, salah, is an obligation from a much higher category. But while many of the previous uh, prophets in their communities prayed, their method and their style and their time for prayer was far different than that of ours. Now, interestingly enough, as it's been mentioned, that you know people would ask, and sometimes people ask the question today that how come what did the Jews, what did the Jewish people used to pray like during the time of Musa? Or what is it that the Christians used to pray like during the time of Isa and Islam? And interestingly enough, we don't find anything about this in Islam or in Muslim tradition or in the hadith of the Prophet And one of the reasons the Buddha I mentioned that could potentially be as a result that none of that should have been preserved. Because then there might have been certain people who would say that in my extra ibadah and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to do something extra and I want to do that ibadah and that worship as well. As a result of which none of that has been preserved. But coming back to what I was saying, that even salah, prayer five times a day, is something that the Prophet did, the Prophet was taught, the Prophet was taught, and of course all the believers in the time of, of the Prophet and it will remain until the day of their church, people will continue to pray. But the fast of Ashura, interestingly enough, happens to be one of those acts of worship in which when you and I fast on this day, when you and I fast tomorrow, inshallah, on the 10th of Muharram, we will be able to say that so many of the other prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so many of the highest people in the generations before us fasted on this day. Um, there are other hadith as well. They are very weak in their chain of narration, but they are found in various different books. As a result of that, I do want to share them to share the importance of this day, to share the, the grandness, really, of this day. Abdullah ibn Amr al-Asr, the Allah narrated the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man sama ashura, whosoever fasts on the 10th of Muharram, faka annama sama san. Right? It's as if this person fasted the entire year. In another hadith, it's been mentioned, Man tasaddaqa ashura, and I'm going to come to salafa in a little while, Man tasaddaqa ashura, whosoever gave salafa on the day of ashura, as if this person gave the hair the entire year. And this could potentially be as a result of the hadith of the Prophet, which happens to be a Sahih hadith, 
where the Prophet says that Siyam Yom Ashura, the fast of the day of Ashura, we took to the Senate of the Kabla, the Senate of the Bible, will forgive, your sins will be forgiven um, in one, sorry, in this one generation, the year before and the year after. Though the Sahih Hadith is that for those who fast on the day of Ashura, your one year sin previous. Prior to this day, will be forgiven, and this is where we want to kind of bring this all of this together. That if you were to fast on Ashura, and if one year of sins have been forgiven, then it's as if we remain in Ibadah the course of the entire year. Right? And so that's sort of the uh, the wisdom behind it that some of the ulama try to explain when they explain this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu So something to keep in mind. Right, that it's as if if we fast tomorrow, it's as if we have fasted the entire year. Now, specifically in regards to fasting, and I'll, I'll just cover this really quickly. We are specifically reminded to fast for two days, and we should attempt to fast for two days. Though some of what we are not mentioned that if we were to only fast on this day as well, it would suffice. It would not be preferred. It would not be something that uh, you know would be propagated or taught. But if someone just ended up fasting this one day and for whatever reason was unable to fast before or after it, that would be okay as well. Now, I am not encouraging for people to just fast on one day. I want people to understand this. I want people to not misquote me. I want people to not take it out of context. The ideal, most ideal situation would be for, for us to fast for two days, 9, 10, or 10, 11. But if for some reason someone was not to be able to fast for two days, and just fasted one day, inshallah, because the hadith, this hadith specifically mentions fasting, the 10th of Muharram, and if someone fasted on the 10th of Muharram, inshallah, they would have that reward. And once again, as a reminder for those of us that might have joined a little later, that tomorrow happens to be the 10th of Muharram. And inshallah, when we fast tomorrow, our reward will be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yesterday evening, I asked someone and said, um, are you going to, you know, are you fasting? And this person very genuinely responded and said that, um, you know, it's fasting is very, very, very difficult. Right? It's a very genuine response. It's a very God-conscious, uh, you know, Islam-practicing uh, believers, I don't know why it's really difficult for me. It happens to be something, it happens to be difficult for this person. This person said, you know what, I, I, I barely get through the fast of the month of Ramadan. Um, if I miss a fast or two as a result of, you know, my uh, my condition, I try to make it up, you know, during the shorter days of the year, perfectly fine and permissible. This person said they weren't going to be able to fast. That is also fine. We also have to keep in mind that this is not an obligatory fast. In other words, if you happen to be with some Muslim tomorrow, uh, and, and you know they're having lunch or they're drinking water, and you are fasting, this should not be a reason for anyone to think that they are better than us. Right? This should not be a reason for anyone to think that you know just because I fast and you have a fast, I am better than you are, or you're not a good enough Muslim, you're not a perfect Muslim because of because you're not fasting. So do keep that in mind. There's many people that may not be able to fast as a result of their illness. And there's many people who may not be able to fast, not be able to fast as a result of maybe no illness. Just just fasting is difficult for them. And as a result, they, they miss the food. They cannot make it through the day without the food. And as a result of that, they get a fast. We should just, for those of us that are fasting, should be in gratitude. For those of us that are not fasting, should also be in gratitude. But this should not be sort of a class system where someone feels or finds that they're better than uh, others. Now, there's in the few moments that we have, and we do need to, we have, uh, for those of us that are following online, uh, we are in the Pacific time zone in the United States of America. It is 9.20 p.m. here. And we have Salat al Isha in about 10 minutes. So I do want to wrap up in about five minutes, inshallah. And I just want to share one hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this is one that is generally uh, also shared. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Man wasaa." It's a very famous hadith. "Man wasaa ala ayalihi yoma ashura wasaa Allahu alaihi saa'ir sana." 
The Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam says, whoever expands their expenditure, their expenses on their family, on the day of Ashura, on the 10th of Muharram, right? The Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam says, Wasa Allahu alayhi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expand on that individual, will inflate, increase the sustenance of that individual for the rest of the year. There are many people who say that this hadith is extremely da'if, extremely weak. And yes, we agree with that. Though this hadith has been narrated by five different individuals, Jabir radiallahu anhu narrates this, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu narrates this, it has been narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu ajma'in. Very prominent companions of the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, it's been quoted that they have narrated this hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So, you know, insha'Allah, you know, if this is something that we find in our tradition. Some people would like to not do it at all. Okay, it's a ra'if hadith, you don't want to do it, we'll never do it, yada yada, etc., whatever it is. But we find that this is something that uh, is in the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We also find that our pious predecessors and the generations before us have not only mentioned this hadith in regards to this day, but have also taken the, uh, this upon themselves to do something. I was going through a, a thread earlier today, and someone asked a very genuine question and said that, what does this hadith really mean? Um, and gave, cited a few examples, and all of those examples were valid, really. You know, you could go shopping tomorrow. And when I say shopping, I'm not talking about going to the mall specifically. We could go grocery shopping tomorrow with the intention that it is the day of Ashura. You do your Safeway run or Costco run tomorrow. If there's something that you've been meaning to purchase uh, for someone in your family uh, and you're going to order it online, let tomorrow be the day. Now, this doesn't mean that you should be out of groceries and waiting until the 10th of Muharram to do your grocery shopping. That's not the way it is. Really, just think about it. What is it that you can do in order to expand for your family, right? Simple, it could be simple things, right? Simple things. And uh, in, in many countries around the world, this is a day in which people will cook uh, good foods, extra foods, will share it with their neighbors or their friends. Uh, this also happens to be uh, a day historically where people would go out and buy their, you know, food supplies, whatever other supplies they need to uh, for their families and those around them. And do it with the intention, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bless us with the reward, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we do it with that intention, then inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would expand on us, inflate, grant us more sustenance and risk throughout the course of the year, inshallah. So this is just essentially a reminder, right? Do, do a little extra. In fact, if anything, you know, uh, there's so many of us when we're fasting or working, we're kind of busy and so on and so forth, as a result of which, you know, you may want to eat out. If you're eating out tomorrow, it's simple. I just, I, and I'm not, I'm not telling you to eat out tomorrow. I'm just sharing this for the sake of everyone. That if you order food out tomorrow, do it with the, for iftar or even for lunch for those that may be having lunch, whatever it is. But do it with the intention that you're doing it for your family. You're spending extra money on your family uh, to make them happy, to bring a smile to their face, to make it easy uh, for the individuals at home who are cooking and do it with that intention that I am expanding my risk, I'm going out of my way to spend on my family and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would grant us even more on this uh, blessed day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless us and um, reward us inshallah and we hope and pray that uh, you know uh, this day happens to be one of blessings for us. This is a day in which Musa alayhi salatu wa salam and the Banu Israel turned to Allah. And this is the day he granted them, uh, you know, freedom from Pharaoh. And so we also want to take a moment to remind, you know, us, ourselves, individually. Let's not, there's a lot going on in the world today. There's, you know, so many people have so many different opinions as to what's going on in different parts of the world, medically, politically, whatever it may be. But let, let tomorrow, let tonight and tomorrow 
be a day in which we reflect on our own selves, right? Reflect on our own selves and take a moment and say, what, what have I done in the last year? What am I doing with my life? How can I make it better? If we are reminded of a shortcoming of ours, let tomorrow be the day in which we raise our hands to Allah and make a sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we're going through a difficulty, let tomorrow be the day in which we raise our hands to Allah and say, Ya Allah, just as you granted freedom to your beloved Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam on this day, I fast today with the intention, you know, with the desire, with the dua that you would free me of my difficulty and of my worry uh, on this day as well. So let, let tomorrow be a day of ibadah, let tomorrow be, be a day of worship, let tomorrow be a day of a day of repentance. Let tomorrow be a day a day of generosity. Let tomorrow be a day a day of happiness. And we pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for ease and blessings for all of us. Inshallah, Amin ya Rabbal Alamin. In closing, I just want to take a moment uh, to apologize. Uh, we are uh, at, at the masjid. For those of you that are a part of this masjid, know that we have been going through uh, construction for some time now, and as a result of which we have a new sound system, we have a new setup, and today happens to be the absolute first day that we are using our new sound system, uh, but uh, actually second day we're using the sound system, but uh, the first time that we are actually using the sound system along with the whole online broadcasting. So if we, uh, and we definitely am reminded that we've actually experienced uh, some quality issues. Uh, so for those of you that were not able to catch on or miss some portions in between, uh, we sincerely apologize, and uh, with your du'as and your assistance, inshallah, when we are able to return back into this beloved house of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are hoping and praying that everyone's experience uh, physically, spiritually, emotionally uh, is a better one and a stronger one than we've ever had before. May Allah bless and reward all of us, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us um, uh, blessings, inshallah. Yes, I'm, I'm receiving text messages uh, that the quality was uh, really bad. So once again, I do I do want to apologize. Barakallahu feekum, jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.